My name is Charles Thomas, Jr. I'm professor and department chair of the Department of Radiation Medicine here at the Oregon Health and Sciences University. I also am a member of the Knight Cancer Institute. Radiation therapy can be used as a, for the most part, about 98% of our patients have a malignancy, and they can be used as part of a curative approach to tumors, um, or it can be used in conjunction with surgery, even before surgery or after surgery, or in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy. A half to two-thirds of all patients diagnosed with the cancer in the world will at some point require radiation therapy or palliative radiotherapy. That is uh, really decreasing symptoms. Symptoms such as bleeding from a tumor, pain because a tumor is pressing on nerve cells, um, um, uh, swelling in certain parts of the body. One of the things that's rather interesting is we don't really know how radiation works to kill cancer cells. We have some ideas that have been developed over the years. Quite frankly, uh, radiation therapy probably caused DNA breaks, uh, the oxyribonucleic acid. The body is very good at repairing simple single-stranded breaks or simple uh, double-stranded breaks, but more complex double-stranded breaks are more difficult for tumor cells to repair compared to uh, normal tissue. And so causing complex DNA uh, breaks is one way that ionizing radiation uh, can kill cancer cells. Another way is to alter the microenvironment, meaning it may not actually kill the cancer cell, but it can change the environment or, or milieu uh, such that uh, the cancer cell cannot grow as efficiently. My name is Wolfram Laub. I am the Director of Medical Physics at OGSU's Department of Radiation Medicine. Uh, ionizing radiation is radiation that has the ability to ionize uh, atoms by uh, freeing an electron uh, from an atom and therefore producing an ion pair. So you have a free electron which has a negative charge and then you have a, a positive ion left, so a positively charged uh, atom uh, left as a result of an electron leaving. The Energies we use in radiation therapy, they are mega voltage energies. In, in this range, the primary interaction between a photon or an X-ray and the tissue is a Compton effect. So Compton effect means that the photon interacts with an electron of an atom and it, is, it would be interacting with an electron in one of the outer shells and it would free this electron, cause an ionization. Um, the photon changes its direction the electron leaves the atom and, sc and scatters in a, in, a, in a different direction. So we have a scattered photon and we also have a, a freed electron. The electron then is actually the particle that will interact with the tissue and deposit energy. So uh, photons are indirectly depositing energy by producing free electrons. The electrons then deposit energy inside the, the tissue. Ionizing radiation causes damage in tissue in basically two different ways. One way is uh, by directly hitting uh, the DNA of a, of a cell and causing damage through di direct hits. The other is to create free radicals. Uh, those radicals are chemi chemically very active and, and then have interactions or chemical interactions inside the cell, therefore killing the cell. Uh, we treat patients in smaller increments. Instead of delivering the entire dose in one uh, fraction or in one treatment, we, we like to split the dose into smaller fractions. The reason is that um, by splitting the dose, we allow time between treatments. So patients are treated Monday through Friday, typically, and get one radiation fraction per, per day, oftentimes for several weeks. And the time between those treatments allows normal tissue to heal, to repair itself, so we cause damage to the, to the cells, but these cells can repair themselves, whereas tumor cells do not have the same capability to repair themselves. So, so that means that by fractionating the radiation, we give the normal tissue more time to heal and the tumor doesn't, doesn't, doesn't heal at the same uh, amount. So we're causing, relatively speaking, more di biological damage to the tumor than we cause to the normal tissue compared to giving the same dose in one, in one fraction. Uh, there are some cells that are very sensitive to radiation therapy. One good example is uh, uh, the germ cells and the testicles, they're very sensitive. Um, uh, the lens, uh, cataracts can develop, which are opacities on the eye and can cause blindness, even after a couple doses of radiation therapy. Those cataracts can be treated, um, 
for example, and that may not cause long-term damage. So there are some cells that are very sensitive, healthy cells, the lens, uh, the cells of the testicles, um, some of the bone marrow cells which generate bone marrow products such as platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells, etc., can be very sensitive to radiation therapy. On the other hand, normal tissues such as uh, major nerves uh, and bone themselves are somewhat um, more resistant to radiation therapy and so causing long-term damage to nerves uh, or long-term uh, damage to bones um, is less likely to occur uh, depending on the dose of radiation delivered. On one hand, um, we use therapeutic radiation, um, ionizing radiation on one spectrum of the electromagnetic curve uh, that many of you have seen in your textbooks, introductory textbooks on chemistry and physics, um, causing, like you've said, double-stranded DNA breaks and so forth. And it's a good thing. However, whenever you get radiation therapy, or cytotoxic chemotherapy, these all can contribute to what we call genomic instability. Genomic instability puts one at risk for having uh, aberrant or uncontrolled uh, cell growth, maybe not in the immediate future, but oftentimes it could be a decade or two down the road. We learned that from the survivors of the atomic bomb blast in the 1940s. Not everyone got cancer who didn't die, uh, who were subjected to those blasts, but late cancers, 20, 30, even 40 years later, were more common in those survivors. And that genomic instability is a result uh, of a long-standing effect that radiation, and for that matter, cytotoxic chemotherapy uh, can occur. So we're very diligent on which patients we recommend radiation therapeutically for, and it is a side effect, meaning the side effect of a second cancer that's unrelated uh, to anything but the receipt of radiation or chemotherapy. Radiation sickness, uh, it can involve different organ systems. It could be the cerebrovascular syndrome, the uh, uh, cardiovascular syndrome, the gastrointestinal syndrome. So for gastrointestinal syndrome, uh, especially if there's an overdose of radiation, patients can have nausea, vomiting, intractable uh, diarrhea, and eventually a uh, fever, and significant dehydration. 